Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor working in London and on the side, I put out some medical education content onto YouTube, Instagram and Twitter, which I found helpful when I was studying and hopefully it's of some use to you guys. So as the title suggests, in this video, we're gonna be looking at COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. We'll look at the examination findings that come up with this diagnosis, how to present these findings systematically and how to answer your typical Viber questions. So hopefully you find it useful. All of this is based on the retrospective approach to preparing for your OSCEs, which I've talked about earlier. So let's jump straight into it. So here are the positive findings from this case. If we look peripherally, there are three findings here. We can see some evidence of pursed lip breathing. On the nails, there's evidence of tar staining and looking at the hands, there's evidence of a fine tremor. Now focusing on the chest, on palpation, there's reduced cricosternal distance. Percussion was hyper-resonant, and on auscultation, there was reduced air entry bilaterally and a wheeze heard on expiration. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of positive findings here. And if you put all these together, the most likely differential here is COPD. But remember, the marks don't come from just saying COPD as your top differential. You get a lot more marks by explaining your findings systematically and backing them up as to why COPD is your top differential. I performed a respiratory examination on this patient who has signs suggestive of an obstructive respiratory condition, most likely COPD. My main positive findings to support this are on general inspection, I noticed a prolonged expiratory phase with some evidence of pursed lip breathing. Focusing on the hands, there was evidence of tar staining as well as a fine tremor indicating likely bronchodilator use. Essentially, there were signs of hyperinflation, such as reduced cricosternal distance and hyperresonant percussion with loss of cardiac and hepatic dullness. And on auscultation of the lungs, vesicular breath sounds are heard with reduced air entry bilaterally and a polyphonic expiratory wheeze heard in all zones. My relevant negative findings are reassuringly this patient is currently not requiring oxygen, there was no evidence of digital clubbing, there was no CO2 retention flap, and there was no evidence of decompensation, such as core pulmonale. This all points towards a diagnosis of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with no signs of decompensation. Of note, this patient has a normal body habitus, which makes Pickwickian syndrome less likely. And we'll come on to mention Pickwickian syndrome later on. So as usual, you'll likely be asked for a list of differentials, and you start with your number one differential. So in this case, you could say, my number one differential here would be chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, given the signs that I've elicited here. I would also like to consider chronic asthma, although this would more likely present in a younger patient with a non-smoking history and also associated signs of atopy would be likely. Other differentials would include bronchiectasis, where I would expect clubbing as well as coarse crackles. And another differential to consider would be alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which would present with lung disease as well as signs of liver cirrhosis. You can also get asked about the possible causes of COPD, and this can easily throw you because everyone only talks about how COPD is related to smoking, but there are also other factors to consider. So you could say, the most common cause of COPD is smoking. However, other causes could include exposure to certain types of fumes and dust, such as coal dust. There could also be genetic causes, such as alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and in these patients, their lungs are more prone to COPD. They could then go on to ask you about possible complications from COPD and always try to classify. So you could say something like, there are various complications of COPD which can be classified based on complications from the disease itself, such as core pulmonale, which would present with a raised JVP and a loud P2, lung cancer from persistent smoking, and infective exacerbations of COPD. You can also get complications from the treatment of COPD, such as long-term steroid treatment, which can give rise to Cushing syndrome. Moving on to how would you investigate this patient? So I'd like to investigate this patient by starting with some simple bedside tests, such as a peak flow, which I'd expect to be reduced in a patient with COPD. I'd also like to do a sputum MCNS to look for any signs of a superimposed infection. I'd also like to check the patient's BMI, as a high BMI is usually associated with a worse prognosis. I'd then move on to some blood tests, so I'd like to start with a full blood count to look for signs of polycythemia, which would likely be present in chronic COPD patients. I'd like to check the inflammatory markers, such as CRP, to look for signs of an infective exacerbation of COPD. I'd like to do an ABG, where I'd most likely expect type 2 respiratory failure. And I'd also like to check the alpha-1 antitrypsin levels. i then move on to imaging, so I'd like to start with a chest x-ray to look for signs of consolidation, which would suggest an acute exacerbation of COPD, and also to look for signs of hyperinflation, such as 
more than six anterior ribs or a flat diaphragm, which would most likely be present in chronic COPD patients. I'd then like to do an echocardiogram to look for signs of core pulmonale, one of the complications of COPD that we mentioned earlier. And finally, I'd like to do some special tests. And in this case, I'd like to do sleep latency tests if I was suspecting Pickwickian syndrome. Okay, so just to finish off this case, I'll go over what Pickwickian syndrome is because I mentioned it a few times. This is just another name for obesity hyperventilation syndrome, which is another cause of COPD, which often gets missed. It isn't related to smoking. It's linked to obesity, as the name suggests, usually a BMI of over 30 and raised CO2 levels. So normally your PaCO2 is more than six kilopascals. So if you do have COPD as a diagnosis, you're pretty sure it's COPD. It's just nice at the end of your presentation of your findings to just comment on the body habitus of the patient and it shows that you're thinking about other possible differentials and not only thinking smoking is the only possible cause. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you found that useful for your respiratory OSCEs. If you did find that helpful, then please give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. But for now guys, thanks for watching, have a good night and I'll see you in the next video.